In this video, I'm gonna be sharing 21 must know facts, tactics, and strategies for YouTube Shorts, the newest feature that is disrupting YouTube and the social media world. And we're really gonna be covering the details to discover if YouTube Shorts is the best way to get views and get discovered, especially if you're just starting from scratch. But also, what are the cons of YouTube Shorts? Can they hurt your analytics? Can they hurt your channel? Can they annoy your viewers? And everything else you need to know when it comes to YouTube Shorts. You gotta just press record. Building YouTube Shorts is a new way to watch and create on YouTube. Really, YouTube Shorts is a app feature that rivals TikTok and Instagram Reels. And with the popularity of TikTok and Instagram Reels and short form content like that, you, this is YouTube's um, response trying to take that market share back from Instagram, TikTok, and other short form places. Now, it just was announced that the Shorts camera is available to everyone in the US and is being rolled out right now. We'll talk about that with these 21 different facts. But YouTube Shorts started in beta. And so it's been tested mainly in India and it's been a massive impact in India. And then they've been rolling out YouTube Shorts to different creators at different levels. In a recent earnings report, YouTube confirmed that Shorts were getting 6.5 billion views a day. So that means this could be a very major way for you to get views on your videos and to start building. So let's cover some facts and smash the like button if you're fired up for this content. Number one, all of US creators have access to the shorts camera that was just released. And what that looks like is when you go to the post page, you will be able to start creating right from your smartphone. Pretty cool. Now, number two, you actually don't need the shorts camera to use shorts so again the shorts camera if you go to this little plus button make sure you update your youtube app and ha you have the latest version of your app and you'll see this thing that says create a short you know from your phone you can upload a video from your phone you can go live depending on how many subscribers you have but from your phone you will now see in the us and at a lot of places around the world the ability to create a short and it might say the word beta next to it that's what it says on my phone then you'll be able to create a short right from your phone just like a tiktok or an instagram reel it's got its unique differences but it's sort of the same idea now you didn't actually you don't need the shorts camera to create a short we've posted about five Five shorts on our Think Media channel so far. Omar has been testing this and he's actually done them all just by editing in like Adobe Premiere or whatever software and shooting vertically on a phone or a camera. So this is a YouTube short being viewed on a desktop screenshot. And so you don't need a certain subscriber number. Sean, I want to be able to do shorts, but I don't have a thousand subs yet. You don't need that. I, I don't, I need more watch time hours. It's not like monetization. You could start a brand new channel from scratch and start posting shorts so long as they're vertical in less than 60 seconds. In this case though, using the shorts camera could give you some advantages. Number three, shorts are vertical video. Might go without saying, but shorts are not horizontal. The key to a short being a short is that it's a vertical video, phone orientation, and it's less than 60 seconds. And so throughout the rest of this video, I'm gonna be sharing another 18 facts you need to know about YouTube Shorts. But I have a question for you. Have you posted a YouTube Short yet? Let me know in the comments. Are What do you think about YouTube Shorts? Are you hesitant to use them? Have you started watching any yet? Are you Do you even know what we're talking about? This is still a brand new feature. And even though, there's been some buzz on YouTube about this. You're super early if you're watching this video. This is this is still kind of bleeding edge. It's just rolling out this week on all uh, phones here in the US in terms of using the Shorts camera. And so let me know your experience with Shorts and hit the like button if you're getting value so far. And today's video is brought to you by ytimpact.com. We actually have an upcoming challenge. Um, it's five days and we're gonna be talking about um, the best strategies for getting views right now, getting subscribers right now, some of the new changes on YouTube, and ultimately how you can not just grow your influence, but also you can make a difference in the lives of people and really make an impact around the world with your content. And so it's gonna be fun, it's free. YTImpact.com is where all the resources are or link in the description down below if you wanna register for that. But let's jump into number four. Shorts can be up to 60 seconds, but they don't have to be 60 seconds. In fact, there's something that as you start experimenting with shorts, you might wanna keep them under 15 seconds. Quick, you know, punchy, 
kind of that TikTok, kind of that Instagram reels. You could max it out, but try 15 seconds, try 35, try, you know, max 60. And so that is what necessitates a short. Number five, you can use popular music from the YouTube library, but only up to 15 seconds. So this is pretty cool. You can use popular music, essentially copywritten music, but just like TikTok or Reels, YouTube is integrating with the publishing companies and the music companies. So you could grab a popular song, you know, where do you get your peaches out in Georgia, pull that in, do your dance, or just put it on your tutorial or your education content or your, you know, entertainment content. Key, as of right now, you can only use 15 seconds of the song. So I was testing, I uploaded a 30 second video and the song just stopped at 15 seconds and then it was silent unless there was audio on the video. The music integration is gonna be more for 15 second, really short form content. What's cool, again, is you can create that right from the shorts camera, but assuming you have the shorts camera, you can also upload a pre-made video and still integrate that with the popular music from the YouTube library. Captions are, this is kind of a new thing they announced, are auto-generated, or you can also self-supply the captions. There's a way to flip that on and you can upload manual cap captions. This is not unlike a typical YouTube video and the viewer can toggle between those two things. Number seven, how to get views. So a couple different ways to get views. Why shorts, Sean? How am I gonna get views on shorts? So what you can see here is there is a traffic source on the right side of the screen of on desktop analytics, saying that this short, it was 58 seconds, and Omar made a video on five simple YouTube video ideas for beginners. So suggested videos was the largest traffic source in the last two days, but shorts brought in 18.5% of traffic. And so the first way you can get views on your shorts is what's called the shorts shelf. So if you've updated your YouTube app, you could log into your YouTube app and go to either the homepage or the subscriptions tab, and you'll see stories. That's like a story shelf. It's not YouTube stories. YouTube shorts is different. And you could scroll and eventually you should see some YouTube shorts. Now, from my testing, as I'm seeing right here, I'm actually not seeing the short shelf. So what I'll do is I'll maybe go to explore subscriptions. Maybe I'll crash the app and I'll reopen the app and eventually that shorts shelf will show up. So basically the way you know if you're gonna see if uh, you see it or not, there you go. So it says shorts beta. And I know this will be like weird depth of field, but I can, you know, you can scroll between, and this is the shorts shelf on the homepage of um, my smartphone. And once I click in one of those, I can go down a rabbit trail of shorts being recommended to me. The first couple are maybe from channels I've subscribed to, then it'll lead me to channels I have not subscribed to. So this is the dream of shorts, right? That you could start getting discovered and getting traffic from the shorts shelf. And so that's just one way of getting views. Here's another short, it was 44 seconds, how to shoot better video on your phone. 26.3% of the traffic on this video, meaning in the last two days, almost 600 views. So that means 50 views of this video in the last two days came from the shorts shelf or shorts players or shorts traffic, right? Now, they may already know Think Media, but again, that is the chance to meet 50 new people you've never met before. Super powerful. Number eight, how to get views, the shorts tab. Now, this was just announced. They have said that shorts will actually replace the explore tab on the home screen. It sounds like and seems like YouTube's gonna be leaning super heavy into the Explore tab. I've also seen up top, I don't know if you've noticed these little bubbles. There's little bubbles at the top that allows me to filter my content. I can filter it right now. I could click Confidence, Grant Cardone, Sales, Podcasts, Motivation. So it's studying my viewing behavior and it's letting me like select categorically what's being shown to me on the homepage. I've seen shorts show up there and down at the bottom of the screen, there'll be home, possibly shorts, then the ability to create content and then uh, the uh, subscriptions and then your library, et cetera. So it'll be actually the shorts tab somehow integrated into the bottom there, maybe replacing Explore, we'll have to see, or maybe it'll be inside of Explore. I don't see it right there. Again, update your YouTube app and start playing around to discover some YouTube shorts. Now, number nine, you can get views on YouTube shorts from all the traditional traffic sources. So you can get views on the homepage. Somebody could search and find a short that you can get in the subscription feed. So notice this particular video that we posted on Think Media, 44 second long short, 
it has 26% traffic from shorts, but 23% traffic's from channel pages, 19% traffic's from browse features. So that's like the home page, right? 14% from suggested videos. Because a short is uploaded at this time to your main channel or whatever YouTube channel, it can still be viewed on desktop. It could still be recommended on the home page, even as a short. Of course, shorts lend themselves more towards mobile, but we're getting a lot of traffic from desktop and all of the traditional YouTube traffic sources. Number 10, you can watch shorts on desktop and smart TVs. A lot of people, the majority, because Think Media is established and has subscribers, are actually watching shorts just on desktop, you know, black on the side of it. You can also watch shorts on smart TVs, but every night, pretty much every night, I watch YouTube on my smart TV with my wife and my son, Sean Bradley. We are flipping around. We almost, we really never see shorts recommended. Like they don't really show up on the smart TV. However, if you're subscribed to a channel, you can find it, watch it, and then sure enough, it'll be vertical on your TV. Tony Ariola and I on the Think Media team were debating about this. He was like, man, I, you know, I hate vertical on a smart TV or whatever. You know, it doesn't feel like the right experience. And I said, I actually don't even really notice. I mean, obviously you notice, but I think about a channel like Daily Dose of the Internet and they mix together full screen content. They mix together viral content from like a TikTok. And to me, it kind of all works together. And I've noticed we haven't seen a lot of negative comments from people watching shorts on desktop on our Think Media channel or any. If the content's good and if it serves the viewer, then you can almost watch it anywhere. But of course, shorts are intended for mobile consumption. Number 11, the only shorts views that will be monetized are desktop views at this time. Now, YouTube's been saying this is a new feature. This is a huge emphasis. I believe it could be the next greatest revolution on YouTube, right? And really a new thing to lean into. Or maybe it just kind of levels out and it's just a segment of YouTube, kind of like Snapchat didn't die. And there's like a segment of people who knows, we'll see where it goes. So they're going to be exploring monetizing shorts potentially directly. But at this point, it's only if the desktop views that are monetized. For example, this short, 58 seconds long, has gotten 19,000 views. Now here's what's cool. It grew the channel 31 subscribers. So that's, that's growth. And they can watch other videos, not just shorts, now that they're a subscriber, right? And it's made $8.63. So that is not super impressive because the only views that are A, monetized are going to be the, you know, desktop views and B, the video sh so short, it maybe is not going to make a ton of money. Now here's one, 44 seconds, the uh, playback CPM and think media here, 13 bucks, pretty good. The RPM, oh my gosh, is $3, meaning we keep about four bucks. YouTube's keeping 10 in this case. Ouch, YouTube. Uh, and... But you know, it brought in what but point is this? Our most profitable videos on Think Media are actually our longest videos, mainly probably because there's multiple ad spots. So we can go to revenue and look at our top videos. Our top three videos are like 45 minutes or longer that earn money. And then one of our other videos probably because of high volume. And that would be because of multiple ad spots again. So this video has earned obviously a lot of views, $20,000. When you go to monetization, and you go to manage mid rolls, you know, one, two, three ads play during this ads can play before and after. So it's potentially more ads being seen, but I've noticed that sometimes revenue goes up when content is longer. So the punchline is really just thinking about the fact that from a direct YouTube AdSense monetization standpoint, shorts is, is really not the way to go, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't use them. Number 12, adding uh, hashtag sh shorts in the title or the description might increase your views. Now, this is also kind of maybe outdated information because YouTube has been rolling out in beta. YouTube shorts has been testing and like, does the algorithm, does the platform see it? Hey, make sure to add hashtag shorts to the title. Hey, make sure to add hashtag shorts in the description. And this is maybe subjective information. Here's what I've learned. YouTube will know that your video is a short if you do not add the hashtag. And the way you know that is on mobile, if you look at the lower right-hand corner of the video, it actually doesn't show you the time, it shows you the shorts logo. All you have to do is upload a video that's vertical in less than 60 seconds, and it seems to me at this point, YouTube knows it's a short. However, many different experts or whoever have said that if you add hashtag shorts to the title or description, it might help it reach the shorts shelf or being recommended in shorts sooner. We have not been adding it to the title just to keep the title cleaner. 
we add hashtags to the description. In this case, we said hashtag think media, hashtag Omar El Takori, and hashtag shorts. So shorts is shows up as those three hashtags above the title. And whether it's there or not, we've seen traffic from the shorts shelf. So that's up to you to test. You know, best practice could be putting in the title if you want, putting in it in the description so it shows up as a hashtag if you want, or not using it at all. You can see how we're doing it there by just putting it in the description as a clickable hashtag. That is the shorts logo on screen. If you're listening to this on audio, it's this little kind of S a version of the red YouTube background with the play button. And you'll see this little icon in the lower right hand corner of your mobile phone on a shorts video. And if you scroll through your subscription feed and some of the people you're following are uploading shorts, you should see that little logo. Number 13, you can post shorts on your current YouTube channel or a new channel. Huge question we get all the time. Sean, should I post shorts on my main channel? Should I start a second channel? A couple rapid fire answers. Number one, managing two channels is very difficult. So starting a second channel might be something you want to avoid if time is scarce. Number two, if short form content would really violate your viewer and the promise you've made to your viewer, which may just be an assumption you're making, but if that is the case, yes, you could potentially shift your content to a shorts only channel. Another thing you can consider is that if you have a big library of Instagram reels or TikToks, you know you can download your TikToks without the TikTok logo by going in and, and it allows you to access your data and I think you can download them all at once. That's best practice by the way. Reels hates when they see the TikTok logo there and they'll reduce your search, your your reach. So if you've maybe have some other less than 60 second content. Now maybe if music is embedded, you know, you could run into all kinds of issues and you may want to resync the the song from the YouTube library, you can figure all that out. Punchline is you could experiment with posting shorts on your current channel where you're posting horizontal video, typical YouTube video, or you could start a new channel and people are doing both. For us at Think Media, we've posted five or six shorts now on our main channel. We are never posting two shorts uh, in a row. And our goals eventually, we post five videos a week on Think Media right now. Our goals eventually be at seven days a week and do two shorts a week. We've at times to put some ease on our schedules, we're shifting things around, done like three normal videos and two shorts. And from our standpoint, and our, sh our share some personal insights and tips towards the end of, the of this uh, video is uh, it's been great. Like it, it really has a lot more to do with the content and if it adds value to the viewer than it does with how long it is or necessarily whether it's vertical or not. Eventually we wanna start a clips channel where it wouldn't just be shorts, but it may be just like clips from other videos or clips from our podcast, the Think Media podcast. Uh, eventually we wanna do that, but hear me, we're a team of creators at Think Media and we don't even at this point feel like we have the bandwidth to start a second channel. Now, mind you, we're posting a ton of videos on our main channel, but you get, you get my energy here. I would recommend that you experiment with posting shorts on your main channel and test it, see the vibe before leaning in. Like, I'm just starting a new channel. I'm starting a whole new thing. You know what I mean? Like that potentially could take your distraction from the main thing, but of course up to you. Number 14, shorts will affect your analytics, but should not hurt your channel. The other objection is, oh my gosh, my views are going, or my average view duration is going down across my channel. Uh, one of the good channels to check out that does shorts well is Legal Eagle. Not only does he have long form videos, but he's posting about five shorts a week. And he said his average view duration on his whole channel has gone down massively because he posts so many shorts, they're short. And so the AVD, the average view duration on the whole channel has been pulled down. But then he said, but it didn't hurt the channel. It just changed the numbers around. YouTube's judging, yes, your whole channel, on really two things, the individual performance of a video, like a, a video will succeed or fail on its own merits. And also the total watch time minutes. So the average view duration has gone down because he still posts the same number of long form videos, but also he posts, you know, short, like three to five shorts a week, but the total watch time minutes on his channel has skyrocketed. Rocketed. So from YouTube standpoint, net YouTube is getting more time on platform from the viewership. Of course, you always have to be analyzing and testing things, but that's something to be aware of. People are afraid that it'll affect their macro channel analytics, which it certainly would if you posted a ton of shorts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it'll hurt your channel. Number 15, you can add end cards to your shorts. And so here's an example of one of the shorts on the Thick Media channel. And at the end, it actually, this was about the best way to potentially invest if you wanted to build a battle station or invested some gear to use uh, the stimulus check to you know start a business, start creating something that'll make you money, you know, start a YouTube channel or like, you know, upgrade your current studio. 
And the short was short. So the call to action was like, if you want more details on this or a full breakdown of some of the best gear we recommend, click or tap the screen to check out that full video. So you can use shorts to potentially po point to your other videos. Next, 16, you can ask viewers to like and subscribe and share. And so if you're thinking about creating a short, realize what is happening on the shorts player. People can hit the like button, they can hit the dislike button, they can leave a comment, they can click the share button, they can see what song is playing in the lower right hand corner. Um, they can click the subscribe button, they can click on your channel and go to your channel. If you understand how the navigation of YouTube Shorts works, it can influence your content and potentially your call to action. For example, lately we've been letting our shorts just survive on their own merits, hopefully recommend one of our videos next or another short next. Think about the viewer mindset. The viewer mindset might be that they are wanting to continue to watch a bunch of short form content. So they may not wanna leave and they're just kind of going through these quick hits, dopamine hits of like cool dancing. Oh, cool tip. Oh, wow, that's a cool way to use a camera. What a cool camera hack. Oh my gosh, look at that cute puppy. Wow, those ducks are riding on that turtle. All kinds of different things and going in that mode. But if you want to potentially direct attention or get something going, you know, hit like if you got value and you know, and we'll see you in the next one. You don't have enough time to tell people to do all the things and you should never really just go down the list. Like, hey, so if you're new here, hit like, leave a comment, hit the share button, hit, I mean, that could be really annoying. There's too much stuff. So think about maybe like one call to action when it comes to your short and how, and think about the viewer journey, you know, and where they're going to go next and how this integrates with your content. Number 17, and if you would hit the like button, if you're getting value out of this video, grabbing attention quickly is critical for shorts. Maybe goes without saying, if you haven't listened to our episode on the Think Media podcast with Brendan Kane, the author of Hook Point, hooks are everything in social media. Grabbing attention up front, the first few seconds. And on YouTube, we like to say a hook is the first 15 to over a minute. Like you might spend the beginning of the video painting a picture of what's coming up, letting people know it's coming up, grabbing attention. But on shorts, it's even shorter. You know, have you ever seen uh, when there's YouTube ads of a movie trailer and the movie trailer is like a minute, but there's a five second trailer for the movie trailer? Have you noticed that? Like it's like boom, because especially it's like you can skip it on YouTube and it's like, and you're like, what the heck? And then they're trying to hook you for a hook. Like it's like, you know, real meta in terms of how much attention we're trying to grab and how quickly. Just something to think about shorts. Boom. The short from the short shelf is in front of them. What do they see? What do they hear? It might be less about what they hear. I mean, you're assuming on the YouTube app, they're more prone to have audio on, but just grabbing attention is going to be super critical for shorts. Thinking about that opening scene, definitely don't start with like some logo or some boring intro or some five seconds, uh, you know, seconds matter. Like the first second of the short, the short might only be seven seconds, you know, consider Vine strategy, like the telling stories in very short amounts of time. So number 17 is grabbing attention quickly for shorts. Number 18, shorts could be a great way for you to get discovered on YouTube. I mentioned that YouTube last numbers were that shorts is getting 6.5 billion views daily. People are watching shorts, 6.5 billion views a day globally. That's over 200 billion views a month. So if you're struggling to get views, if you've been struggling to get traction, if you're trying to find your thing and trying to find a way to break through on YouTube and get discovered by people that don't know you, shorts could be a really great tool or resource to try that. If it aligns with your content, always something to experiment with. And then at the same time, you don't want it to be just a gimmick for you. And what I mean is, you know, on Think Media, we're trying to be very sensitive to what's the perfect short that still honors the promise we've made on the channel and honors the viewer, honors the community. And we've noticed that if the video is valuable and short and vertical, people love it. And if it doesn't, if it's not a gimmick, gimmicky or off brand. So this isn't necessarily just a way to hack views for views sake, but if you can find a way to align it with your current content or just experiment, it could be a really good way to get views. And remember at the end of the day, people are more important than algorithms. Algorithms is not even what it's about. So yes, yeah, shorts can hack the algorithm right now, but there's always people on the other side. What is that people thinking? If you also reach a ton of people and get millions of views, but from the wrong audience, that could lead to maybe a new thing for you, but it might, what good is it to get 3 million people seeing your content that has nothing to do with your vision, your business model, your values, the purpose of your YouTube channel. If you want to pivot your plan, cool. But sometimes it's not just about, again, numbers, if you will, vanity metrics. It's more about impact. It's more about the people you serve. So something to consider in your shorts 
strategy. Number 19, you can repurpose your YouTube shorts to TikTok and IG reels. So we're trying to continue to expand here at Think Media. Again, we're a team of content creators um, over the years, I think to really be effective on social media um, and to live your life, you're in one of two seasons. You're either in the sacrifice season where you're really just hustling. And I know that's where a lot of our community is maybe full-time job and kids, and you're trying to work 10 or 20 hours a week to build your YouTube channel. When that's the case, by the way, it'd be very difficult to be great at TikTok, great at IG Reels, great at YouTube, great at YouTube Shorts, going live on LinkedIn. Like if you try to do everything, especially when time is limited, you'll probably spread yourself too thin. I think it's important to be really focused on the most effective thing, the best use of your time, your time, the essential ingredients necessary to you getting to the next stage, which in my opinion, would be making enough money so you can work less hours at work or go full time, or maybe hiring someone to help. So for us, in terms of trying to dominate all the social platforms, for me, that's been having a team support and help me. And we're not even on TikTok. I mean, I'm on TikTok, but I post like two. And, and we're not really on, we haven't done a ton of IG reels. Our macro goal, just so you can get an insider look at what we're doing at Think Media, is actually to think shorts first, and then to use shorts and have a trickle down from shorts to TikTok and IG reels. And not just in a robo robotic fashion, but sometimes think would this piece of content work good on all three platforms? Especially if we integrate music, we could potentially integrate it on all three platforms. Natively selecting the song, because that'd be the only way to really get the music right on each platform. And therefore creating the short, uploading it from the shorts camera on my smartphone first to YouTube, you know, selecting, I got my peaches out in Georgia, you know, and then going over to Reels and maybe doing the same thing and then TikTok and kind of having like just a strategic planning of, of where does each piece of content go? Again, you could think TikTok, TikTok first or IG Reels first, but we're kind of a YouTube first company anyways. YouTube is the only platform where your content lasts forever. It's a search engine, all these other things. So that's the way we're gonna do it. I'd love to hear how you're gonna do it in the comments and what your vision would be of trying to dominate these short form platforms or, or kind of be multiple places, but being efficient with your time. Number 20, a short could be a good way to introduce a full video. You know, we mentioned that, uh, for example, we're gonna do like a video coming up soon called um, best lenses for the Canon M50. And there's actually, or like all the lenses, like top 10 lenses, cause there's not a ton of lenses for the Canon M50, but we'll go through like all of them. So, okay, if that's the full length video, then the short could be the top three lenses for the Canon M5. It could add value in and of itself, but then it also could link to, and like, and if you wanna see all 10 of the, of the best lenses for the Canon M50, click or tap the screen and you use an end card. Now, from our testing, sometimes the end cards don't show up and there could be bugs in the system, bugs in the matrix. They're probably always working those out on YouTube, but it is a new feature and it is evolving. So, how things flow and end cards that you know all could change, but it could be a way to introduce a full video, which also gives you the opportunity, if I'm sitting down to make 10 best lenses for the Canon M50, after I'm done with that or while I'm doing it, I could also make a short of three of you know the three best lenses for the Canon M50 and kind of have a one-two punch of a long form and a short form video. Think about how that could work for you. And I've seen some people that actually do previews of a video, they do a short that's like, a preview, it's kind of like a commercial. I'm not the biggest fan of that because I always want an individual upload to add value to the viewer in and of itself and not just be a commercial for something else as much as possible. But you know, you do you, and that's just a thought that you could interview, yeah, you know, integrate shorts with pointing to full videos and maybe vice versa and playlists and cross promoting. We call that circular video virality here at Think Media where you're kind of always thinking about how you can strategically, while adding value, cross promote your content from playlists to videos, to the part one, two, three, to this, to that, to other things, constantly kind of cross promoting, again, in a way that always adds value to the viewer. And number 21, shorts will continue to evolve. And that maybe goes without saying, they're at a huge place of maturity right now, because, uh, they're, the camera's now rolled out to the full US. You can see YouTube is fully behind shorts. It's gonna be a thing for sure. It already is a thing. You know, I think it's worth it to think things through. And here's my point. If you adopt shorts in the next one, two, three months, three months from now, it's gonna be new. 
If you adopt it in 2021, it's going to be new in 2021. Mark Zuckerberg said, move fast and break things. Unless you're breaking stuff, you're not moving fast enough. Posting one short on your channel is not going to like ruin your whole world. You know what I mean? It's not your subscribers aren't going to like hate you, but you got to listen and always listen to their feedback and think about the value. So move fast, test it, try it. Post three, post one or two, try it, you know, mess around with it. If you're not breaking something, you're not moving fast enough. And I've seen some people who've posted a bunch of shorts. They've kind of worked. And I'm like, but what really is it led to? I mean, I, they sort of got on the short shelf. Like, how's it uh, uh, connect to your bigger strategy? So I think experiment a little with shorts, just kind of some personal advice. Don't stress out like posting one or two or three is going to destroy your channel. There's no way it would do that. Like it, it might, you might go, huh? You could read the comments, get some feedback. It might lead to a whole new opportunity and a whole content pivot for you. And, and then continue to stay subscribed here and get information because no doubt about it, this will evolve and we will be committed to always bring you the best information here at the Think Brand uh, so that you can always get more views, build your influence and make a bigger impact with the content that you're creating. And that reminds me uh, to of the question of the day. I wanna hear your story about shorts. Do you think they're legit? Do you think they've hurt your channel? Have you got negative or positive feedback if you've posted some in the comments? Have you posted one yet? Is the shorts camera? Did you update your app? Do you see the shorts camera down below? Maybe if you're outside of the US, do you have the shorts camera? What questions do you still have about shorts? Uh, I would love to hear from you. And those were just some of my thoughts. And as a reminder, I'm so pumped because today's video is brought to you by the YouTube Impact Challenge. This video is brought to you by ytimpact.com, a five-day live and highly interactive challenge where you will learn how to start and grow a YouTube channel that helps people and makes money. You'll get the newest strategies and learn exactly what's working on YouTube right now. Register today at ytimpact.com.